Ladies and gentlemen, William Barr is laughing at this moment. Really, he's just laughing. There's there's nothing that he can do. There's no, there's no more that he can do to upset and to annoy Democrats. He's told the truth. He has stated exactly what Mueller and his team of partisan loyalist, Hillary loyalist Democrats, what, six or seven of whom donated a, a, over $50,000 to the Democratic National Committee, President Obama and Hillary Clinton. There's really nothing more you can do. He's laughing. I mean, you're talking about the most epic, epic, I don't know, it's not It's not uh, trolling, I don't even know what it would be. He's simply doing his job, and they've now held him, <laughs> the House voted to hold him in contempt of Congress. House panel approves contempt for Barr after Trump claims privilege, and Trump has every right to claim executive privilege. Look, they didn't indict the president or Trump Jr. or anyone else. It is over. They did not give Democrats what they wanted. They did not give Democrats what they wanted at the behest of Hillary Clinton. So there's nothing really more they can do. He's laughing now. They are not, the Supreme Court, if it ever got to the Supreme Court, would laugh and say, well, wait a second, why are you forcing this attorney general to speak to your legal counsel? He's not under trial. He's not, in, he, he's not a witness to anything. He's not on trial. You're essentially upset that his description of the Mueller report doesn't match your description. Or maybe it's with less disdain and less contempt for President Trump than the Mueller team. So what are you, what are you doing? So the guy's laughing. President Trump is laughing. The momentum, the pendulum has swung. Now they all know. They all know. And I'm looking at... I'm looking at videos of like Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and First Lady Michelle Obama and videos of just people who would know that Clinton is running. And you could see every time, every time there's a mention about 2020, either someone around them, there's like this Bill Clinton, I think a, C a CBS interview, and there's a guy next to him and the the journalist is asking, well, what do you think about 2020? And you can you can see the guy next to Bill Clinton because he knows Hillary's running. The the guy's like, oh, I, I just I don't know. And then Bill Clinton goes on to goes on his spiel like, oh, well, you know, the next candidate has to be uh, aware of uh, Russian interference and all that. And then when Michelle Obama is interviewed, um, she kind of. You could tell that she knows something. When Hillary Clinton is asked, you can tell that, well, I'd like to be president. I don't understand why we can't simply um, accept, like, everyone needs to just accept that she's running again. I don't, like, they're not going to go with Biden. And you will see the hit pieces continue at, with greater intensity. But all of this is for Clinton 2020. There, there had to be a scorched earth policy of the most absurd narrative because America had to be dumbed down. We had to be brought into the depths of hysteria just to make Clinton palatable. When she runs again, Democrats, liberals, progressives, most progressives, even way, people on the far left who view Bernie Sanders to be like this horrible monster, he's not a monster, he's just cowardly and he continued the same myth that said that Democrats cheating him was part of a, a plot. They will all vote for Hillary Clinton enthusiastically. And all the pundits who pretend that they were critiquing Clinton will go back to pushing people to vote for her in swing states and pushing people to vote for her just in every state. But William Barr is laughing. Look, there's nothing more that he needs to do. And this is really what they don't like. Here, this is exactly... If, you, if you're wondering why all the theatrics over... I mean, they created this nonsense. 
they created this. He did. He was willing to, to testify before the House Judiciary. He was willing to testify. What he wasn't willing to do is speak to legal counsel. And the legal counsel could have simply passed questions to Jerry Nadler and everyone in the House uh, Judiciary Committee. So it's like, well, we have to have oversight. Have your oversight. What's the problem? Well, we want William Barr to jump through these hoops, these fiery hoops on one leg, um, you know, while singing the national anthem, uh, holding a chihuahua and, um, you know, on a tricycle. It's like, no, he doesn't have to do all of that. He's only, he, he actually doesn't even have to, he technically didn't have to give the entire report. He only had to, I, th- I believe it was only a summary, but President Trump throughout this whole process could have invoked executive privilege long before he did. So President Trump invoked executive privilege today, like William Barr told him to do. And then the House then promptly voted <laughs> to hold William Barr in contempt. Very different from Eric Holder, who just straight up refused to give documents and information regarding yet one of the many scandals that just nobody was even the media just ignored along with the IRS scandal and everything else that took place under President Obama. Yet there was no drama because the media uh, and the Democratic Party have a symbiotic relationship. But let's listen. This is what it's all about. It's all about this right here. The evidence is now that the president was falsely accused of colluding with the Russians and accused of being treasonous and accused of being a Russian agent. And the evidence now is that was without a basis. And two years of his administration uh, have been dominated by the allegations that have now been proven false. That's what they don't like. He's on to them. First of all, look, do you think that William Barr, the guy is a brilliant guy, okay? He's not like Sessions, who's just like this cowardly little elf, this little Keebler elf, and, you know, recused himself by just like a hint of, like, didn't even fight. Like, eh, they found out I spoke to Sergei, they found out I spoke to Sergei Kislyak, oh my God. I must recuse forever. R- Rod Rosenstein, go ahead and 25th Amendment, use a wire. Start the Mueller probe for two years. Whatever you want to do, leave me out of it. It's like you're going to have FBI officials charged. You're going to have a whole bunch of people going down because it is so transparent, overt, blatant, in your face. It's just obvious. It's kind of like, um, you know, there was uh, okay, there was that documentary about Lance Armstrong, and during a race, what was it during race? He went into like during the race, he went into a trailer. And it was either like I forgot what kind of performance enhancement of performance uh, enhancing uh, technique. I forgot exactly what he did, but it was like during the race, he just went into a trailer, and nobody suspected that foul play would would have been. But he was, you know, engaging in in like. In cheating, but it was in plain sight, and it happened. But see, nobody was like, "Well, he's not going to go into a trailer and in the middle of the race. He's probably just, you know, changing his his uh, you know socks or you know cleats or what. I don't know, whatever. You know what I mean? But during the race, he just went into a trailer and then went out and then you know continued the race. Uh, I don't know whether it was a tour de France or whatever, but like. It was in front of everyone. And that's what Clinton managed to do. All of this, she managed to send and receive and transfer and store top secret and special access program intelligence. Nobody is, nobody is 
report has reported that really. I mean, Tom Fitton, obviously, Paul Sperry, John Solomon, Sarah Carter, Kimberly Strassel, Dan Bongino. Um, there have been a bunch of a bunch of people. Black conservative patriot is awesome. His channel is amazing. And I say, you know, like you got a guy who's Nick DiPaolo is awesome. I listen to him now every day. It's hilarious. But the you talk, you're talking about a massive cover up of grandiose crimes and a setup which was it's just unbelievable. I mean, it's in your face. They set up Trump, and now he, let's listen to it again for two years. For two years. Let's listen to this again. Oh, that the president was falsely there, where the evidence is now that the president was falsely accused of colluding with the Russians and accused of being treasonous and accused of being a Russian agent. And the evidence now is that was without a basis. And two years of his administration uh, have been dominated by the allegations that have now been proven false. See, an allegation without substance, without evidence, is easily proven false. They made statements and claims that did not have any evidence to back them up. The Steele dossier is complete and utter garbage and nonsense. That's why when they say, well, it's not verified, they're, they're giving it too much credit and they're being too diplomatic. It is a bunch of deceptive, blatant lies about Trump written by a man paid to undermine Trump. Christopher Steele didn't like Trump. He was paid specifically to undermine Trump. This wasn't national security. And here's another element of why Mueller and and Trump are kind of laughing now. They really are because they're in the driver's seat. This isn't national security. The election wasn't hacked because the election and American democracy wasn't hacked or they didn't interfere in the election because the DNC has nothing to do with American democracy. It's actually the antithesis of that. They cheated their most popular candidate. That's why when you had all of these fake and phony these, these hilarious pundits who were like, yeah, we love Bernie. Okay, Bernie Sanders. Um, you didn't talk about the DNC fraud lawsuit. I wonder why. You didn't talk about the DNC. He hardly talked about the DNC emails. I wonder why. You never bring up the fact that Debbie Wasserman Schultz was forced to resign. I wonder why. The way the left works is that you could only go so far. The reason people on the left, many of them despise me is because I went too far for their liking. I didn't just, um, I didn't stop at, you know, not calling Clinton a criminal and um, saying that the FBI should indict her because that's just too much. Because, you know, I mean, if she wins the primary, which she's the front runner, she's going to win the primary. And, and Bernie was, you know, Bernie Sanders proved to be essentially a coward. He promoted the same myth that helped plunge the country into a new cold, another Cold War. But before that, these people were just Bernie Sanders voters enough to make the transition to Clinton 2020 because we wouldn't want the orange monster to have a great economy and great foreign policy. Then like you get then you get the the pivot to god, you know, Trump's America. You know, gosh, you know, you know how did Trump win? How was it's like these they're so stuck in their in their warped world. It's not how did Trump win? It's how did it's how did people manage to convince themselves that Clinton was was credible or um, worthy of the presidency? And how are those same people going to vote for her yet again? That's the issue. That's the issue. So it's like they don't they don't get it. Like the economy is a good economy. 
foreign policy much better than President Obama's foreign policy, an anti-interventionist foreign policy. He wants to bring American, American soldiers home to their families. You know there's something, little, a dirty little secret on the left. You will never find a pundit on the left who will say these words. And I used to say these words all the time, and nobody brings it up. Bring Americans back home to their families, to their sons, their daughters, their mothers, their fathers, their wives, their husbands. Bring Americans home from never-ending counterinsurgency conflicts. Bring them home for Christmas. Well, they certainly wouldn't say that to left. But bring them home for New Year's. Bring them home for Thanksgiving. Bring them home for um, their kids' birthday parties. Bring them home. From, I'm talking about the ongoing quagmires that we still face. And I'm also talking, I mean, every soldier from the special forces, you know, operations, bring them home. I know they exist to do those things, but I just want to the soldiers right now who are stationed, who that President Obama wants to um, return to the United States. I mean, President Trump, <laughs> Obama sent them there after Bush. Obama sent even more soldiers to certain locations. If I say the names of the countries, it might not be uh, kosher for the YouTube algorithm, so I'm just whatever. You know which country or countries that President Obama intervened in, well, Libya, but you know the countries he sent Americans to that he shouldn't have, especially if there's Russian, like tens of thousands of Russian soldiers have served in that country already. It's like, what's the point? And Hillary would have um, exacerbated all of this. Hillary Clinton would have um, increased our involvement in these quagmires. And that's what the left never got. They don't care about that. They don't care. The, the, the closest they'll get to caring is the negative impact our military interventions have on people in other countries, which is a worthwhile, which is true. Hundreds of thousands of people perish. Like, you know, the road to you know where is paved with good intentions. So we, we claim to have these, you know, lofty ideals, you know, Bush and then Obama, and then it obviously leads to mayhem and chaos. Just ask the people of Libya what they think of Obama and Clinton. But you'll never get that from the left. So that's the, that's the thing. I mean, and that's, that's something that Tulsi Gabbard represents that they just don't get. They just, you know, I'm voting for Trump in 2020, but I could see myself, depending on certain issues, like if she, if she just goes, takes the party line, Democratic Party line on the Second Amendment, then I'll... Yeah, I probably won't vote for Tulsi Gabbard in 2024. But if she's not as, if she's if she has more of, if she focuses more on the anti-interventionist foreign policy, and it's a it's an establishment Republican who wins the prime who wins the Republican Party, the antithesis of Trump in 2024, I'd pick Tulsi because that person has no problem sending Americans off. Of course, I'd have, I mean, I don't want, you know, I'm not down with the gun control um, policies of Democrats at all. Uh, and there's some other issues, obviously. But see, the thing is, like, in terms of censorship and, um, you know, this, po the, the PC bullying culture, outrage machine. Tulsi Gabbard is not about that. Clinton is <laughs> has one foot in her past and then one foot in the, oh my God, you know, the outrage machine essentially working for her. But I mean, that's the thing, you know, any, any person who wins the 2020 uh, primary for Democrats, it's going to be Clinton, obviously. But if, let's say, theoretically, Tulsi Gabbard were to win, she wouldn't be the Tulsi Gabbard that makes her so special. 
the Democratic Party has become even more insidious than they were in 2016. You know, and I saw this coming in 2015. That's why I, when I wrote, um, all those pundits, they weren't the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet. How, co- how, how come, you know, they didn't get hit pieces from the Daily Beast? Hmm? How come they? Didn't, how come the Washington Post didn't call them the the unofficial scribe of Sanders's most hardcore voters? Oh, well, you know, you're a Trump supporter now. Oh, yeah, that shows how credible you are. Yeah, it actually sh- definitely shows how credible I am. Absolutely, because I left that cult. I think for myself, Trump is not the caricature that the left has made him out to be. And in terms of ideals, like you know. Uh, an anti-war menta- uh, foreign policy is far more of that than President Obama or Hillary Clinton would have been. But what about this? That's <laughs> if they if they say that, which is fine. Um, any topic they bring up, Clinton would have been worse, far worse in terms of foreign policy. And you have. Clinton and Obama destroying Libya. But anyway, why am I kind of going on this tangent? Because it's all about... um, This is a long-term propaganda ploy, a, a cheap political ploy by Democrats. They have to muddy the waters. They have to make everything so morally relative that people forget. And they really vote against their own interests with Clinton. You know how, you, like, the Democrats are always arrogant. They're like, the Republicans vote against their interest. Yeah, well, d- who, guess who's going to vote against their interests again? Cl- they're going to vote Clinton enthusiastically. And when it happens, ladies and gentlemen, every single thing I've said about the Democratic Party, uh, not only will be vindicated, people will realize that all of this was just in plain sight. Clinton purchased the Steele dossier. Democrats out, outsource crowd strike. We have no clue if the Russians interfered in the election at all. Well, actually, they didn't. The, the, the reality and the evidence shows they didn't. Not one vote was altered. If you say, well, you don't know that. Exactly. That's the point. If you're, if you're claiming that votes were altered, then give, give, give some data. Most of, the, most of the ads were seen after the election. And the vice president of Facebook says that um, the goal wasn't to elect Trump. And if this Russian plot, this Russian interference, was to inform the country that Bernie Sanders was cheated, don't you think the Democrats would probably then, like, don't you think a functioning political party would say, gosh, we need to rebuild and do away with that mentality? No, they doubled down. They spent two years. And now they're holding William Barr in contempt because he simply told the truth about the two years that they've wasted of American history. Actually, the Democratic Party has wasted its own history. Like, the history of the Democratic Party for the past two years has been a complete waste. Now, you have these pundits saying, oh, it's so popular, Medicare for all, everyone wants it. Great, why didn't you? Where is the vote? Congress, the biggest goal, the biggest job they have is to pass legislation. Where's the legislation? Where's the, uh, AOC wasn't elected for a Green New Deal resolution. That's bait and switch. She was like, abolish ICE, Medicare for all. People are losing their lives. $15 minimum wage. Um, Well, where are these? Where are the bills? Introduce these bills. Then she's, oh, well, it's a Green New Deal resolution. Then now she's like, oh my God, it's a a trash compactor. What did she say? Garbage. Uh... (laughs) Hold on one second. AOC, the trash compactor. She's like, oh my, what is this? Don't put your hand in it. Trash compactor, yeah. See, like, what is this? Um. <laughs> Garb- a garbage compactor. Oh my God. It's like, (laughs) 
Ooh. What is that? So, there's a, <laughs> there's a monster living in my sink. Garbage disposal, sorry. So, <laughs> Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, that's right. Instagram about her garbage disposal are way too relatable. What? How is this relatable to anyone? She can't do any wrong. There's nothing that she can... 107,000 jobs removed from New York. It's nothing. There's nothing she could do wrong. My God. It's then also... This is like, you know, she's getting the Clinton treatment. Nothing. So the Stanford study said um, the person who benefited most from staying, uh, fake news was Clinton. Then Bill Clinton cites a uh, Columbia School of Journalism study that said, oh, well, you know, the media wasn't fair to Clinton. It's like, what? They're like, well, her email scandal was talked about more than all of Trump's scandals because Trump didn't really have any scandals. The next says Hollywood tape, you care about that? What about Justin Fairfax and, and Keith Ellison and Bill Clinton? You don't care. Alexandria Case, your Instagram with her garbage disposal are way too relatable to who? I, I mean, it's like... Even if you don't, if you've never had a garbage disposal, you kind of know what it is. What do you think? It's a portal to another universe? This is a portal to Hades. <laughs> it was like, like what was that? Like the He-Man portal? What was the little s snorkel or whatever the thing, the, the floating thing? Gosh, what was that? Anyway, like she's like, Everyone knows her as making a name for herself in Congress. Ooh, what a good name. But you know, but did you know that Congresswoman is also supremely relatable? Uh, <laughs> okay. In a recent series of Instagram stories documenting a new experience with a certain kitchen appliance, AOC showed followers. Didn't she? But she, she grew up in an affluent area, from what I understand. AOC showed followers a side of herself that politicians as usual. Wow, she's so honest. But... I thought she was going to go and I thought she was going to help pass Medicare for all legislation. But the garbage disposal encounter is probably more important. That's probably saving lives right now. So, Alexandra Cases Quintem's Instagram about a garbage disposal are super relatable and honest. No, they're not. And are totally making me feel sympathetic towards the congresswoman's struggle. Okay. Oh my God, she cannot do any wrong. My God, this DC apartment is bougie <laughs> and has things I've never seen before. Like, what is a garbage disposal really for? I have, you know, scraps of food. Is it better or worse than, or to contact aliens? Whatever you want to. Do. <laughs> it's a portal into another universe, AOC. Just don't put your hand in it. Is it better or worse than throwing something in the garbage? More important, why is it loud and yelling at me? Well, it's not speaking. Um, lay off the shrooms. It's not speaking. It's just, like I said, they're little blades and don't, don't put your hand in there. My God. I am told this is a garbage disposal. <laughs> I come in peace. Take me to your leader. You garbage disposal. The land of garbage disposals. Is this what social mobi mo mobility is? God, who, who looks at this and says, That's me. I have always needed somebody in Congress who didn't know what a garbage disposal was. And I found that person. What about Medicare for All? She promised you she'd vote on it. Who cares about that? You, H.A. Goodman. You're a Trump supporter. Using kitchen appliances you never saw growing up. OMG, that makes you so authentic. All you people telling me to reach in and grab... <laughs> All you people re telling me to reach in and grab whatever they're... Whatever's there... <laughs> are just Republicans trying to test my health insurance. I'm on to you. Well, you could have had Medicare for all, right? Isn't that what you said? But you don't want to vote for it. So I guess 
I guess that all the pundits that were saying that, or the majority of them, were just grifters. I don't know. Also, quick update from yesterday. Garbage disposals are apparently not anything fancy. They are just illegal for a long time in New York, which is why many of us from, from there haven't seen one. No. So feel free to throw bigotry. <laughs> what? Hey, what? How? How do you link this to bigotry? Even the garbage disposal? Really? Economic exploitation? <laughs> Economic exploitation? What is, what? And climate denial? Climate denial? Do you have like CO2 bubbling up from your, down that drain and flick the switch, honey? Yeah. Because we're moving on with our lives. <laughs> we're moving on with our lives. You see yet another, hopefully another tech company will come and 40,000 jobs you can prevent. Oh my God. A AOC's Cortez tweet about rhetoric and death threats. So yeah, I've received death threats also. So, but nobody cares. <laughs> like, like, the left is like, if you're anyone you, we don't like, you know what? A boulder can fall on you and no problem at all. It's all about the garbage disposals. <laughs> is this what social mobility is? Oh my goodness. Lord. The only retribution will be Trump's second victory. And honestly, if, if it comes to it, then, then another Republican in 2024. The Democrats must, um, and liberal pundits and media, must finally realize that uh, the garbage disposal... <laughs> The conservative garbage disposal um, needs to win out in the end. My God. You know, this is about... And, and, and William Barr's laughing. It, it, it's just... This, this segment's about William Barr. It's like you can't... There's just so much to talk about. So many things. This whole thing is this giant deception... It's just a grandiose deception. And the sooner you realize it's a grandiose deception, like when Clinton runs, it will be because she has been planning it from 2016, the second she lost. <laughs> Only from New York court with horrified garbage disposal. <laughs> <laughs> There's a monster living in my sink. And this is this is the person we have to listen to regarding uh the future of humanity. You know, it's like you don't have to you don't have to even know how a garbage disposal works. But maybe you should know what it is before you tell everyone that <laughs> there has to be a green new deal that everyone's life has to be altered. No air travel, um, no internal combustible, combustible engine, um, no internal combustion engine, no, um, what else? It's, it's like, it's, it, it's, it's too much. Oh, only electric car vehicles, and I explained the um with no internal combustion engine you're relying on you're relying on um electric car vehicles the electric car vehicle batteries rely on cobalt lithium and nickel the mining of which would decimate communities especially in the congo but don't tell aoc that i explained that in my in my um Um, Federalist article below. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> thank you so very much. <laughs> if you want to support my voice long term, 
my Patreon is below. And thank you. William Barr's laughing his, his behind off. Thank you so much. <laughs>